Welcome back. Playwright Nelson Diaz Marcano invites viewers on a journey to 1950s Puerto Rico with their play Las Borinqueñas. The play chronicles the lives of five Puerto Rican women who are fighting for their right to live full lives in a society that enforces strict gender roles. The playwright of La Borinqueñas joins me to discuss. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. This is such a pleasure. Now, I love saying this word uh, <laughs> just because it's a, it's, it's a new word for me um, and it's a lot of fun to say. Uh, but can you just tell us, uh, you know, what is Las Borinqueñas? As a word or what it means in general? Well, yeah, me? can you actually explain, you know, yeah. like what it means? Uh, I mean, the, the, the actual definition of it is like the island of Puerto Rico, or you know, name is Borinquen. So Borinquenas are the women that live, uh, that live, that come from that island, uh, the island that I come from. And uh, this play, uh, Las Borinquenas, is a testament to those women and their resilience. It's, the, it's a love letter to the women that raised me, and ultimately it's an exposure of American history. Uh, so that's what it means for me, that word is, is bringing it back to who we are, because that's, those are the women that really raise us. It's not the American women. I wouldn't even say Puerto Rican women, but their original name are, is Las Borinquenas to me. Now, how did your journey with the play begin? Oh, uh, this, I am obsessed with exposing my uh, culture. I grew up in a very assimilated Puerto Rico in the 90s, where people, you know, people like me with curly hair were trying to look like Sean Hunter for Boy Meets World. I ended up looking like I had crazy two things coming up, and we were so obsessed with uh, whiteness and looking American and, you know, looking at that time, Baywatch and all those things, mm -hmm. that we forgot a lot of who we were. Uh, not in, like, we never forget who we are. Nobody's going to make us forget that, but in Kenyans, we'll never let us forget. But um, I realized as, as I moved in, in here and I, I had a, a, my ex-girlfriend at the time, she, had, she was having these deep pains. Um, and she was trying to find a birth control pill that will help her deal with those pains at the same time that will help her. Uh, she didn't get the pill to, to, to not have kids. She had the pill because of the pains. But it took a year and different pills to finally get there. And it got, that got me so interested because I was raised only by women. So I remember no, there was a shame to the birth control pill even in the 90s. So when I finally saw it, it was amazing to me that it was causing this much pain. And lo and behold, I checked the history of it because I love researching. And there it goes. It's in Puerto Rico that they were building, that they were trying this. And uh, that got me into a rabbit hole where I, I found the history of sterilization in Puerto Rico, the history of these birth control pills and what they did to the women, to my ancestors, mm -hmm. to get this pill ready for ev everybody else. Now, I definitely want to highlight it. As I mentioned, the play takes place in 1950s. Um, and there's a lot of significance and history regarding um, reproductive rights and, as you mentioned, birth control. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, one of the main things about the 1950s for me is uh, it's the moment that, it, one, to put it in context and in, in, in explain a little bit, uh, the 1950s was a science race. People were doing the polio vaccine, they were, you know, the, 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 the space race was starting. There were so many things. The, the, the nuclear bomb had just come through. So there were all these science leaps that were happening that not till the 90s with the technology leap of the internet happened uh, before. So the 50s in science has that. And then Puerto Rico during that time was the moment that the fighting against the, you know, trying to be independent didn't end, but we got squashed basically. And the United States made us a commonwealth. Uh, so there was this aggressive takeover of our culture that even though it has been happening for 50 years, now they had the permission of the commonwealth world to make it more American. So th this is, while the world was moving forward, Puerto Rico was getting into this place where it needed to move forward with it. And but what that meant was you need to forget who you were. And so I, I wanted to highlight this because one of the main things about my work is uh, exploring the relationship between the Puerto Rico and the United States. Because uh, it's American history. If you, if, if American want us to, as a colony, they have to admit us as a American history. So this is American history. And that's why I, I chose the 50s, because it is such an important part in American history and Puerto Rican history where they converge and become one that has got us to this point. So if I'm going to explore that relationship, I think this point right here is the point where we can start. Uh, there's 50 years before that, but in this moment is the moment that um, 
everything that's happened mm -hmm. starts, uh, like begins. Now, La Borinquenia follows five women. You know, how does the play explore the multifaceted nature of women in Puerto Rico through these characters? These are all women, uh, not that I knew directly, uh, but that were part of my life. Uh, you know, like I said before, I grew up raised by women. My dad was around, but it wasn't like, I lived with my grandmother, my mother, and my sister. All my life, I'm, I used to visit my other grandmother all the time. Like, I very rarely have a male figure. Uh, so these women are just little parts of them. It's, uh, it's parts of my mother who had arthritis since I was born and woke up every day, got me to school, got me an education uh, that many people are, like me didn't get. I come from the country. I come from a very deep country where I had to go and catch chickens and eggs to eat. If I wanted breakfast, I had to go get my own eggs So from the nest. So these women woke up every morning with pains, with, with a country that really set to, to, to get these gender roles. And they didn't care. They raised their community. They made us who we are. And like, there's a reason Puerto Ricans still keep their identity. It's because of these women and, and who they were. And one of the things that I really want to explore here is that every time somebody does a tragedy play or, or like explores a tragic event, they focus so much about the effects that they have that they forget there was life happening. You know, when I remember when 9-11 happened, it was such a tragedy, but I also remember what was happening in my life. And there were other things that keep us resilient, that keep us moving forward. So I wanted to explore what is it that makes us Puerto Ricans, this little island in the middle of nowhere with 135 big, have people like Bat Bunny and like superstars that have changed mainstream media and pop culture and keep making history, even though our culture keeps being attacked and, and, and basically trying to be diminished. And, uh, and one of those things for me has always been these women, these women that refuse to set themselves as a stereotype, these women that laugh out loud when bad things happen because that's the thing they need to do to move the next day. Because pain is not an option to thrive. And we don't survive, we thrive. Now, I really want to um, talk about how the play explores pretty much the beginning of the birth control pill as a reproductive right and freedom while also many other, as you mentioned, like sterilization happened in Puerto Rico, you know, can you just talk about the challenges of highlighting, you know, this polarizing reality for Canadian women where, of course, there's this new freedom, um, but how some of the women may have been negatively affected, um, you know, due to the experiments during that time? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is actually a great question uh, because it is a very divisive thing. Even myself, you know, uh, these pills were, ba were created on the back of black and brown bodies. And uh, black and brown bodies that once the trials were done, they were not able to afford anymore. So you have these women going to this trial to then be like, you can't afford it and we're not gonna give you a discount or anything. Um, but at the same time, what was created to it, it is a miracle. This pill did create freedom. This pill did create choices for women that they never had before. It's, a, it's probably, if not the most important, discovery of the, of the past century. And, and to think about that, and then to think about m my grandparents and my friends and my grandparents being affected by it so badly, you know, it's not all of them. Obviously there were so many people that didn't get affected, but there's also a high percentage of women that got sterilized. Uh, there's a, 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 a high, and not just by the sterilization operation, but by the pills. That a lot of women that like had such nausea, such headaches, such blood clots, such everything that they lost the, the who they were during this process and they didn't know why because nobody told them why. They told them these pills were safe. They told them these pills were 100% safe. They had been tested that this was a trial for family planning. But at the same time, once they found out, more women signed up. More women wanted to do it because it was so needed, especially in a world where overpopulation is a problem and poverty was rampant and, you know, with the embargoes that we have in Puerto Rico, which, you know, we have the same embargo that Cuba has. So we are paying more money in groceries sometimes than Americans pay for. These things, it's, 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 it's the, it's the, 
I, I lost my thought, my train of thought here. It's okay, yeah. But I definitely, I, I love that you're mentioning that it is uh, kind of like, even listening to it now, I can see how conflicting it is it's, it's, for I so think many that, that's people, it. yeah. I, I got it back, I got it back. Uh, the problem is that this woman needed all this and they got the opportunity to see how their life was going and how they could do it. So they, they were willing doing this sacrifice, but they thought about this to me is, of course they were doing. They, they were selected, they were targeted to do this because they knew they wouldn't be saying no. Uh, Dr. Pincus uh, actually had tried this in the mainland a few times and the women here, women of privilege, that were his patients or his uh, colleague Dr. York, John Rock patients, didn't, would, didn't have to deal with it for long. And they were like, oh, I have a headache, I have edema. They have so many things and they were like, no. But this woman didn't have a choice. Like there is famously one woman uh, I was gonna highlight her, but I, I didn't have time. But there's this woman called uh, Julia Garcia who had ten kids by the time she was thirty. Oh wow! And she started at sixteen. So just thinking about all that, she didn't need to breathe in those times around. So she doesn't really know what the pain was from the pill or being pregnant all the time on her body. So it's that kind of place that was so easy to take advantage uh, from. And but ultimately, at the end of the day, it's a miracle that we have this pill. Right, and you know, I definitely um, think that given the current climate of reproductive rights, that a play like this is just definitely um, something that's needed. And because it, it gives us a chance to kind of look back, I think a lot of us are stuck in today, it gives us a chance to look back. So I think it's so amazing. Can you just let people know what they can do to actually support the play? Yeah, uh, I mean, come see it, put it all in your social media and all that, but more importantly is get educated. Go out there and get educated. The, 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 the birth control uh, dilemma is not over. As we can tell, there's a million things that are still happening. There's so many problems and so many issues that's been going on uh, that the best support to, you can do to this play, besides watching it, is get educated for all those women in your life. Be, make sure that when they come to problems, you're not ignorant of those problems. And if you are ignorant of those problems, Educate yourself so you can help as much as you can because we are entering a part in America that is hard, especially, especially for women as Roe versus Wade and all these things are taken away. So the best we can do is be there. Women, men, everybody, be there, educated, so we can fight this in, in a way that, that makes sense because if it doesn't, they can easily steamroll us. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us and having this conversation, and I really did appreciate kind of getting the history lesson, you know, of like what's happening in Puerto Rico and affecting us right now. So yeah. thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Las Borinquenas will take the stage from April 3rd to the 28th. To learn more about the play and how to get tickets, visit latinxplaywrights.com. We've come to the end of our show today. I'd like to thank all of our guests for joining us and you, the viewers, for tuning in. If you miss any part of today's show, you can catch the Recable cast at 5 and 10 p.m. on Optimum Channel 67 and Verizon Files Channel 33 or watch anytime on the web at bronxnet.org. You can catch a brand new episode of Open with Darren Jaime on Wednesday and with Rena Valentine on Friday. I'm Kevin Aline wishing you and your safety and wellness now and always. See you next time.